Hello everyone, and in this video we're going to be looking at an equilibrium problem. In specific, we're going to be looking at chapter 12, problem 21, from the Fundamentals of Physics text. In this problem, we're given the following, a system, as shown in the figure, and we are told that there is a concrete block with a given mass hanging off the end of a uniform strut, which also has a given mass. A cable runs from the ground, over the top of the strut, and down to the block, holding the block in place. Uh, we're given two angles, the angle between the horizontal and the strut, and the angle between the horizontal and the cord, and we are asked to find A, the tension that exists within that cable, which uh, we can see is T in the diagram, and the horizontal and vertical components of the force on the strut from the hinge, and we're also shown the hinge and the strut labelled within the diagram for problem 21. So what we need to do is look at an equilibrium problem solving strategy, and uh, there is a document that covers this, uh, it's one that I put together myself, it's available in the description below, but uh, essentially is a series of steps and processes to solve equilibrium problems in two dimensions. So, step one is to draw a free body diagram showing all the forces and their orthogonal components as necessary. Um, and again, we want to consider most of the general forces when we're actually putting them together and it lists them there. Also, for this particular problem, it's slightly unique. We have two triangles, and we're going to be looking at the strut and the hinge and the tension, so it's good to identify any angles that may be necessary in the diagram, because we can actually calculate more than what's present there. So let's have a look at the two different triangles. We have the triangle formed by the cable and the strut, and the horizontal, and then we have another one which is formed by the strut, the vertical, which uh, also has the box, or the concrete block there, uh, and the horizontal as well. So these two triangles, we can look at angles alpha and beta. So alpha is going to be our angle between the cable and the strut, and if we look at the other angle in the triangle, one that isn't labelled, one that isn't phi, we can see that it's going to be 180 take pi, if I get the marker tool here. I guess I'll use a red colour. But we can see from here, that this angle here is going to be 180 take theta. It's quite simple because, again, we have a horizontal flat surface there. And so from this, we also have the angle alpha. And this angle alpha is between the strut and the cable. So using a bit of algebra, we can say, well, angles in a triangle must add up to 180, and therefore we get alpha equals 15 degrees out of the equation there. So again, that's just by plugging in the values, because we're given a value for phi. It should actually be phi instead of um, theta there. I apologise for that. Phi. But again, we can work that out quite simply, just by actually looking at the triangle. Now I consider angle beta, which is in here, in this triangle. And we have that vertically going down. So again, we've got 90, plus we've also got theta, the actual theta, which is 45. We rearrange and we find that beta is 45 by considering angles in a triangle, adding up to 180 degrees. So now we can consider the free body diagram. Of course, this block has some centre of mass, and that is going to project a force due to gravity. This is known as m of the block multiplied by g. That's its actual quantitative amount. Then we have the center of mass of the beam, and that will also have a gravitational force acting on it. So m beam multiplied by g. We also have a force of tension, which is the one we want to find, and we also have a force due to the hinge. These are the key ones we need to identify in this system here. All right, so let's start by considering torque. So this is off the 
problem solving guide for the actual equilibrium problems. We have our free body diagram over here. I'm just going to make sure I have the pen turned on because it's very handy. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at the relative position of these forces. So a really good uh, place to actually start is because we're looking at this triangle for the forces, it's good if we could label this length here as being some length L, because again, we have two of the gravitational forces there. So it's good if we get a distance in terms of that, because we know torque, or net torque, the sum of all torques, is equal to the sum of forces multiplied by some perpendicular distance to that force. So in this case, it's quite straightforward to identify what's going on. I'm going to start with the actual block and beam with their center of masses here. So we have m block multiplied by g. That's obviously just the force due to gravity. But then we have r as being l sine b, or l sine beta. So remember from before, this one's beta and this one's alpha. Then sine beta, l sine beta, is simply l. And sine beta, it's opposite side, so it's going to be this length here. And as you can see here, this is the lever arm for the torque. And then we have that orthogonal to the direction of the force, which is going downwards. Now let's have a look at M beam G. Again, similar thing. We have this here, and it's pointing downwards, and it's got M beam multiplied by G. But now we have L on 2 sine beta. So we have a half L, which is just from there to there. And again, it's sine beta because this is the opposite side here. So as you can see, I can extrapolate that line down, the force and the lever arm, a horizontal, and it's L on 2 sine beta. So there we go, we've worked out the first two. The next one is the tension force, and we again can get this by considering trigonometry. So we have the tension force acting, and we have again some orthogonal components we can draw, and when considering what we actually want, which is a lever arm, which is horizontal, uh, which is, of course, going to be perpendicular to that, we're going to get TL sine theta. So we have this length L here, sine is going to be the opposite side, and the tension is obviously going to be um, perpendicular to that. So now we can rearrange this equation. Again, this is sine alpha because we have this angle alpha in here which we must keep in mind with the tension. Then we can rearrange, so we can bring these two to the other side of the equation. And of course, this all equals zero because the net torque in equilibrium is zero. And then we can rearrange. Now, we don't know what L is from the problem, but that's no problem because we have Ls on both sides, so they're gonna cancel out. Oopsie daisy, let's just go back into there. Okay, um, but we don't, we, we, we don't know what L is, but it's going to cancel out, because when we bring L sine theta down to the other side, we isolate L as a common factor. And then from there, we can substitute in the angles, the masses, and G, which I'm just assuming to be 9.8, um, into the equation. And G is 9.8 meters per second. And from there, we get the tension as being 6.63 times 10 to the 3 newtons. So very straightforward, you just need to consider net torque. Generally with most equilibrium problems, you won't be able to just balance forces because you've got to sort out your torques first. So it's always good to consider some value that's common amongst all these forces for distance. In this case, it was the length of that beam. But again, something very important from the text, if there are several points, consider one you know the least information about. In this case, it's the length of the beam. You're cancelling that out. Um, and we're considering it, obviously, to a reference frame that is quite neutral. We don't know a lot about it. And it's very important that we get this correct with the balancing torques. And this isn't necessarily that easy because there's a lot of trig involved, but once you look at the torques, it starts to make sense what's happening. So now we can start considering forces. So we've done part A, we've worked out the tension. Part B, same sort of deal we have net force in the x direction, and in this case, it's just gonna be the tension force, which is acting in the opposite direction. So we have, we have this here, and then we essentially have another component of the tension there. They're acting in opposite directions. 
And so the force of the hinge on the strut, which is, um, on, sorry, on the strut from the hinge, is going to be in the x component equal to t cos 30 because we rearrange it and we know that in equilibrium the net forces in the x dimension must be equal to zero and so as a result we end up finding that the force on the strut from the hinge is going to be equal to 5.74 times 10 to the 3 newtons okay cool so now we can consider the same thing in the y direction. They must be balanced. We've done our torques, so now it's just our forces. This is the easy part. We see we've got one down here. That's in the y direction. This is in the y dimension. And this is in the opposite to the y dimension. And so F net in the y dimension is equal to zero. We get this equation here. Again, we consider T sine 30, which is also acting in the downwards direction here down like the other gravitational forces and we rearrange to make this out the front and then we simply summate the other forces because they're all acting down and it must be balances force here must equal them we substitute in our values and we get 5.96 times 10 to the 3 newtons cool so now we can also work out the force on the strut from the hinge totally not just the two individual components x and y and again we do this by considering the pythagoras theorem because again we've got orthogonal components of force and we simply know that the hypotenuse squared is going to be equal to the sum of the squares of the other sides and from there we find the force to be equal to 8.27 times 10 to 3 newtons so hopefully you found this video helpful uh, it just considers a basic equilibrium problem. The key part is drawing out the free body diagram and balancing your torques in the last slide. So hopefully this video was helpful. Let me know any uh, questions you have in the comments below. Uh, and again, check out my guide in the description. Thank you for watching.